John Adams' Letters from the Front podcast for July 1916. This podcast looks at life in World War I through the letters of John Adams, who was 23 when he joined up in September 1914. He served with the 9th Service Battalion Royal Irish Fusiliers and was involved in many significant events on the Western Front, particularly Passchendaele. These are his words, read by his grandchildren and narrated by his great-grandchildren. July 1916 was a very significant month for the 36th Ulster Division, the division that John Adams was part of. Although he was not on duty, he was injured at this time, we will still give a history of the regiment for the 1st of July for the Battle of the Somme. This is read by all four of John Adams' great-grandchildren. In contrast to that, we also have John Adams' eldest grandchild, my big brother John, who took a day trip to a place where John Adams, in the First World War, took a day trip while he was convalescing. The contrast between these two scenes, the bloodshed of battle and uh, the serenity of a park, are very stark, but also they describe how war can be. My name's Mark Adams, and John Adams was my grandfather. At 7.10am on the 1st of July, 1916, under the last of the British bombardment, the men of the 9th Royal Irish Fusiliers moved out of the Hamel Trenches into no man's land. As they moved through the weeds, they gave the regimental battle cry, fa a bla The Battle of the Somme had begun. The first wave was followed at five minute intervals by the second and third, and finally at 7.30, the fourth wave. It was the second wave of men that were caught badly by the German machine gunners, with the third and fourth waves being caught as they climbed out of the trenches. Men describe the German machine gun fires as looking like a fine shower of hail. At first the Germans began to surrender as they saw the Ulster men approach, but soon changed their minds when they noticed that there was no support for these men and continued fighting. The 9th Royal Irish Fusiliers had two Lewis guns. They were caught up by barbed wire in the initial advance and with one gun crew killed and wounded, the other lacked ammunition to be effective and moved back to cover a hole in the wire. By 10am, many of the survivors were back in the trenches at Hamel, with hundreds dead and wounded in no man's land. Survivors attempted to consolidate small strong points or move back to the lines, with many unsuccessful. Attack and counter-attack were carried out until the Ulster Division were retired from the front line at 10pm after 14 hours of fighting. The 9th Royal Irish Fusiliers were relieved by companies of the York and Lancaster regiments. A good word to use for the day was annihilation. 20,000 dead and wounded in one day of battle made this the greatest disaster in British military history. Of the 600 men and 15 officers who started the day, 518 men were either dead, wounded or missing, with only one officer left. That night, Lieutenant Geoffrey Cather searched no man's land for survivors from 7pm until midnight. At 8am the next morning, he continued his search. There was no ceasefire to gather in the dead and wounded, so this was under enemy gunfire. He was not alone. Other men joined in the search. After bringing in four wounded men, he went to check on another, calling to see if there were any more and was answered by machine gun fire and was shot through the head. He was one of nine men awarded the Victoria Cross for his bravery and sacrifice. The Battle of the Somme would last another 140 days, claim nearly one million lives and gain two miles of ground. For the few men of the Royal Irish Fusiliers who were left, the Somme was over as they moved out of the area on the 3rd of July. But the name of the Somme still rings of sacrifice 100 years on. I've come to Rook and Glen Park on the south side of Glasgow. It's about two miles from where I live and it's a lovely, beautiful park full of trees. I'm actually sat by the boating pond at the moment, looking over the pavilion where they're selling ice creams and coffees and so on. 100 years ago today, John Adams was here. He had come on a day trip from the Royal Alexandra Infirmary in Paisley probably on a Sharabang, which is the Great War equivalent of a minibus, probably with half a dozen or ten other convalescing soldiers from the hospital. 
it was a good way to stop them being bored and get them out of out of the hospital for a day, give them something to take their minds off their injuries and, and so on. There were probably a group of walking wounded people who were just convalescing, like, like John Adams with, with a hand wound, but he was able to walk around, able to go and see things. I presume he'd have walked around here with his, um, his hand in a sling. And I've come here 100 years on the day to actually just take a couple of pictures and um, have a walk around the park and imagine what it was like 100 years ago to have a group of 10 soldiers probably dressed in a mixture of khaki and hospital blue clunking around in their, their really heavy army boots walking around the park. I presume there would have been children running around the park at the same time because it's a Glasgow summer. It's a beautiful day today, but you, know, you never know. It's Glasgow. It probably was raining when, when he was here. And I'm just here to savour some of the sights and sounds and atmosphere of what he might have felt and heard and seen 100 years ago today. So I'm actually stood at the falls themselves where you can... Uh, you can hear the river obviously falling down. There's a couple of falls coming underneath the bridge and then falling down in two rivulets. Uh, I've just taken a couple of pictures to try and compare with the, the original postcard that John Adams sent to his mother. And it's very interesting that I can probably spot the exact spot where he took, where the photograph was taken for that postcard. Obviously it wasn't taken by John Adams, he bought the postcard, but presumably he stood at this spot and looked at the, looked at the falls. Quite extraordinary. The river snakes down through a beautiful little wooded glen, cutting through carboniferous sandstones, which is really quite, quite beautiful at the moment. And it's very quiet and peaceful. There are loads of birds singing, people milling around, and obviously the sound of the, ri of the river floating past. To try to recreate the picture, I found a viewpoint which gives a view of both parts of the waterfall that you can see in the postcard, but it's really quite high up compared to where the picture was taken. So I think the picture was taken low down on the opposite bank of the, the river to the current path. Uh, so it's actually, without a bit of scrambling, it's probably quite inaccessible. But that's probably the reason why you can't see the bridge in the photograph that's mentioned on, on the website. There's a relatively newly restored part of the park and the paths, which I believe is where the Lover's Walk was. This has been, in the last couple of years, just restored with timber and gravel walkways going down a relatively scruffy bit of the park at the moment, but it just needs to grow back in. The river, the Old House Burn, flows from this park down towards the White Cart Water, which adjoins just down in Newlands, near where, actually quite near where I live, so it's quite a local river for me. As I've been walking down the river and listening and watching and seeing people do things, I've just been thinking what would have the soldiers been doing. They'd have been strolling, they'd have been joking, they'd have been laughing. There maybe would have been moments of reflection and um, quietness. And I think that's probably normal. I'm sure there also would have been a chance for a cup of tea, maybe a sandwich and maybe a wee bun, because I doubt whether John Adams would have gone many places without having the appropriate refreshments. The Royal Alexandra Infirmary, Paisley, Scotland, 3rd of July, 1916. My dear mother, just a line to say that I received your letter this morning. I wrote to you the day I got your parcel, but you could hardly have it at the time you wrote this. I received your parcel all right, and many thanks for what you sent. Perhaps someday I may be able to repay you. Well, my hand is going on all right, but it will be some time before it is better. But I am alright here. I have nothing to complain of. They are all so very good to us. You might tell Annie I want her to write a line to me soon. I have not heard from her for a long time. How is Jimmy getting on? I see some account of there being no twelfth this year. Tell Jimmy not to wear all the light boots out till I get home as I am tired of carrying these heavy ones about and I will be glad to get them off for a couple of days. You can tell him that I said I will exchange when I get home. He might also write and let me know how things are going. The weather is keeping wet here now. I only wish it would clear up as we are about sick of rain now. I hope it is fine when I get home. No more at present. Hoping this will find yourself and all at home in good health. I remain your loving son, John Adams. Paisley, 5th of July 1916. Postcard shows Cross and Mailand Street, Kilmacombe. 
Dear Mother, Just a card to let you know that I am getting on alright, hoping all at home are the same. This is a view of the place that we went for a drive to yesterday. It is about 11 miles from here. The weather is not too bad now and I hope it keeps good when I get home. Your son, John. The Royal Alexandra Infirmary, Paisley, Scotland, 7th July 1916. My dear mother, just a line to say that I received your letter this morning and I am glad to know that yourself and all at home are in the usual good health. As for myself, I am getting on all right and may be able to go home at the end of the month. But we do not leave here to go home. We have to go to Glasgow and may be kept there for some time. Thanks very much for the stamps which you sent. I am sending you a cutting of the newspaper with all the names of the men admitted to this place the night we came over. I had two letters from Jeannie and she seems to lie in good health. We were out for a drive on last Tuesday to a place about 11 miles from here. It was a lovely drive and we went on breaks. It took us four hours to get there. We got our tea before we left and the weather was very good. But it is raining today. I do hope it clears up soon as I do not want any rain when I get home. I suppose your flowers look well. Have you many this year? And did the orange lilies come over? I saw a lovely garden of orange lilies at a place on Tuesday. They were very nice. Well, I think I must draw to a close, hoping to hear from you soon again. I remain your loving son, John Adams. No postmark, probably included in a letter, 12th July 1916. Postcard shows Inversnaid for Hotel and Falls, Loch Lomond. Taken from the water, a large hotel dominates the photograph, with the waterfall tumbling into the lake beneath the bridge on the right. Small boats are scattered on the waterline, and a path slopes from the lake up to the hotel. Dear Jimmy, just a postcard hoping to find you still enjoying the usual good health as it leaves myself not so bad at this time of writing. How are you getting on this weather? Is it very wet? It is just as well that they are not going anywhere today. It's simply pouring. Is it as bad as the 12th that we went to Tandrugi? Do you remember that day? Yesterday was fine and we went for a wander and we were at a Loch Lomond for a day's outing. It is a lovely place. We were out for a sail on a motorboat and it was splendid. I hear Jay McCulloch was wounded but I cannot see his name on the list. I do hope it is not time. There is about 10 Bestbrook wounded. I see a brown name. We have lost a lot of officers. Both our captains were wounded. There is not many privates in D Company wounded that I can see. I hope it will soon be over. No more present, Jack. Postmark 19th July 1916 to Mr James M Adams, Lissadine, White Cross, County Armagh, Ireland. Postcard shows Lover's Walk, Rook and Glen. A path winds between densely planted shrubs and trees. A distant couple approach indistinctly at the far end of the path. Dear Jimmy, just a card to let you know how I'm going on. You never think of writing to me at all. How are you getting on? This is the place we were for a drive on yesterday. I think I will be going home next week. I'm not quite sure yet. I see in last week's paper that I've lost most of my section. Hard luck, but I suppose it's what may be expected. No more now. Jack. Postmark, Paisley, 19th July 1916. Postcard shows the falls, Rook and Glen. A view of a cascade through a narrow wooded valley. Dear Mother, just a line hoping it will find yourselves and all at home in the usual good health, as this leaves myself going on all right. I expect to be coming home next week if I keep going on as I am, but I'm not sure yet. No more present, your son, John. Postmark, Paisley, 20th July 1916. Postcard shows picturesque Paisley. A view across to Thomas Coates Memorial Church and the John Nielsen Institution, perhaps over a canal where Canal Street now runs. Dear Mother, just a line to say that I am leaving here on Saturday the 22nd. I do not know yet if I am going home, but I expect that I am. We'll write again and let you know. No more at present. Your loving son. Stob Hill, Glasgow, 23rd July 1916. Dear Mother, just a line to let you know that I will be home on Tuesday if all is well. I expect I shall come home by Newry, except something happens that I do not know about. 
I left Paisley on yesterday so they keep me here as I could not get a boat across last night. The weather is keeping very nice, it is a lovely day today. I hope it keeps like this when I get home. I think this is all now until I get home on Tuesday. I remain your loving son, John Adams. Thank you for listening to John Adams' Letters from the Front podcast. To find out more about John Adams and his family, visit www.johnadams.org.uk forward slash letters. The history of the 9th Service Battalion, Royal Irish Fusiliers, during World War I is taken from the Blackers Boys. Visit them at www9 irishfusiliers.co.uk with the number 9. Podcast will be published a hundred years after the letters were written, so will be published nearly every month. This has been a Mark's Mess production.